Hello, CMH visitors. This is Jason Hammond again. I am the AC manager here at the Children's Museum Houston. Uh, and I want to uh, share with you a very, very fun project today. We are actually in our eco station right now. And because we're in the eco station, I thought what better thing to do than a food web. Food webs are great, they're lots of fun, and they actually teach you that things don't go like this. Things kind of go all over the place when it comes to eating what and who does what and what goes where, okay? Uh, before I begin though, I do want to thank uh, the people who brought this to us. That would be the W.T. and Louise J. Moran Foundation. Uh, they sponsor our A-STEAM uh, program, and I'm the manager of that. And this is one of the things that we've done in our A-STEAM program. Another thing I want to tell you about is that all of these different images you're going to see soon, all the cards that have like mushrooms on them and alligators and whatnot, they're all going to be on our website. So if you want to do this at home, you can. Uh, if you can't print them at home, you can just uh, draw what you see. If you can print them at home, there's going to be even more uh, images than I have on the table here. I had to kind of make it a smaller condensed version. I think if I'm remembering correctly, there's 64 different uh, organisms that you can choose from in our complete food web. So first of all, let's just talk a little bit about what a food web is. Uh, it's a way for scientists to understand within a particular ecosystem, a particular environment, basically what eats what, okay? So there's different things that we need to talk about when it comes to what eats what. First of all, uh, there are what we call omnivores. Omnivores eat a little bit of everything. They eat both plants and they eat animals, okay? Then we have species that are called herbivores. They eat nothing but plants. And then we have species called carnivores and they generally eat nothing but meat. Okay, so think about for a minute, what are humans? Well, lots of times when we're sitting down to dinner, we might have a little chicken on our plate, we might have some potatoes on our plate, we might have some grains on our plate, so we're definitely omnivores, okay? And that's sort of what you wanna do with this food web. You wanna sort of look at everything that there is to see and try to think, okay, does this eat plant? Does this eat other animals? Does this take its energy from the sun? Things like that, okay? So, because I said the sun, let's start with the sun. The sun is right here. Now, the sun is the center of our solar system. All the planets, all the asteroids, all the comets, all the dwarf planets go around the sun. And the sun is magnificent for us here on the Earth because we are just far enough from the sun that it gives us just the right kind of warmth, just the right kind of energy so that things can grow like trees and plants and then other things can be here that love the, the temperatures that we have, like the animals and the insects and all that kind of stuff. And that's how we can start our food well. We can start with our sun. And the first thing we say is, what organism on our table would get its energy from the sun? So this wouldn't even be like an omnivore, an herbivore, or a carnivore. This would be like a producer, okay? so. If you look on, on the uh, table here, we've got all kinds of things that take its energy from the sun. Uh, everything technically needs the sun, but there are certain organisms here that get a majority of their energy from the sun. And that would be the plants. So let's see if we can find some plants. Well, I see an acorn over here. All right. Oh, I see a Texas pine. Oh, look, right over here. I see a magnolia. Cool. And then, oh look, a tree right here, Texas live oak. And then I see some milkweed. So let's kind of start off a little small, not going too far. We're going to take a piece of yarn. We're going to cut it, because I'm doing this by myself. I'll tell you how to do it with friends in a moment. We're going to cut it, and I'm just going to say, okay, from the sun to the milkweed, we have a connection. All right, look at that. Now we gotta look on here and think to ourselves, well, what likes milkweed? What likes to live off of milkweed? You know, possibly some of the animals like, might like to eat milkweed. Humans might use milkweed for certain things. You notice there is a human here. We don't keep ourselves out of the food web. There's an insect over here called the northern walking stick. Maybe that likes milkweed. Maybe the beetle likes milkweed. I'm not sure an alligator 
really wants to eat milkweed, but it might eat some in a pinch. But I know one species on here that really, really likes milkweed, and that's the monarch butterfly over here. So what we're going to do then is we're going to get a new piece of yarn, and we're going to cut it, and we're going to go from that to that, and try to make the two touch. I might have to move this over just a little bit. Try to make the two touch so you have this sort of kind of web thing starting, okay? Now, what might eat the butterfly? Well, I think a lot of things might eat the butterfly. Uh, maybe not the other insects, but you know, possibly an alligator just hanging out might snap up a butterfly. Um, humans might eat the butterflies if they needed to. The gray fox might eat a butterfly. But I think I'm going to go at this point, maybe the bat. Maybe the bat will eat a butterfly. A lot of bats eat insects. As they fly around, they echolocate and they hear insects. So they might run into a butterfly and eat that. Um, that's the cool thing about this is like, I'm not even sure what all of these animals eat. So you can look this up stuff up too and think, do big brown bats possibly eat butterflies? I'm sure they do, at, given the chance. Because um, they're not really looking at what they're eating. They're more like hearing what they're eating. So let's go ahead and do the bat to the butterfly. Remember, try to put it on the piece you had before, and then right over to the bat. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, what, what eats a bat? Well, probably a lot of these things eat a bat. Heck, a human might eat a bat, it had to. Um, but there is an animal, it's called a coyote. And coyotes, they do hunt things, but they're also at times opportunistic eaters. If something is kind of just sitting there, not looking too good, they might go eat that. And let's just say a bat, you know, hurt its wing or something like that, fell down to the ground, a coyote walks by, I can see it eating a bat because they are carnivores and that would be something that a carnivore eats. Uh, they're actually uh, omnivores too, coyotes. Um, they, they sometimes will eat things outside of meat because like I said, they're scavengers, okay? So then we would take it from the bat over to the coyote. Now, coyotes are pretty high up on what we would call the chain. You know, they're, they're pretty uh, formidable creatures. Maybe a wolf would eat a coyote. Uh, like the fox probably wouldn't because it's smaller, you know. Uh, but this wolf probably would have needed to. But I do know one animal here that we would call what we would call an alpha predator. And that would be this alligator. Basically, if a coyote wandered into the bayou and the alligator was like sort of hidden there and just hanging out, the alligator would chomp on that coyote pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go from the coyote over to the alligator. And then the next one you're going to be pretty surprised at. So the coyote to the alligator. All right, awesome. Now you can see we kind of have this little line thing going. It's not straight. It's actually going all kind of all over the place. Now I just said that alligators are what we call an alpha predator, which means they don't really have an enemy of their own. They're pretty well, you know, fortified creatures, you know, with their, their um, reptilian scales and all that. But I do know one thing here that does eat an alligator, and actually, that would be our human. I actually ate alligator not too long ago myself, you know, had some alligator jerky. So we actually can take the alligator and go on over to the human, and that's actually a good connection to make. So. Humans, we, ate, we eat a lot of things, a lot of things. So we go from the alligator, and then we're coming way over here to the human. Now, as you can see, not a straight line, it's kind of curving all over the place. And now we're gonna to start to come back a different direction because one thing that humans also eat are acorns. We eat a lot of acorns. A lot of people eat acorns. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect the human to the acorn and then you might guess what the acorn is going to connect to next. Go ahead and think about it and make your guess in one second. Where do you think it's going to go from the acorn? Well, like the milkweed, the acorn's a plant. It's probably going to go to the sun. So we're going to bring that over to the sun. And then you can see it's not at all a line. It's more like this kind of circular thing that's going on. And then, since we're back at the sun, we have to think about what would go next. And I'm going to just say, hey, let's go to the Texas pine. Why not? 
And then you can get even more creative. You can start to think to yourself, okay, maybe nothing around here eats the leaves of a Texas pine or anything like that, but maybe something lives on the Texas pine. It makes the Texas pine its home. And that might be something like the insect here, the, the, the walking stick. So we can connect those two. And then from there, we can start all over. And we can be like, okay, so what would eat a walking stick? Who knows, you know, and what if one of these things would eat a walking stick? I know humans eat walking sticks, we can go back to human. Um, I bet a, a fox would eat a walking stick if needed to. So you see what I'm saying? It kind of can just go all over the place. And like I said, when you have more cards, you can do more with it. So this is how you can do it if you're alone. You can also put it up like on a wall, like you see over here, like a blank wall. And you can tack them up like using like push pins and then you can actually push pin the yarn around and hold on to it. And you can you know, invite your parents to see what you've done. But what you can do if you're with someone is you basically can just take your yarn and to the next, like say you're the son, you're holding the card, someone else is holding the milkweed, you toss it over to them. They take it from there, they wrap it around. Say you have a third friend, you toss it over to them, things like that. So that's how you can make a food web standing up. Now again, we have all these ready for you on the website. So you can, pick, you can print them out or you can just you know, put them up and you can look at them and think about it. But if you don't have the access to do the printing, you can really, really, really just sit down and draw them yourself. Include your dog, your cat. If you have a fish at home, include that. Include everything that you know of as well. If you, you know if you, in your house you have rabbits that run around. Uh, not necessarily your pet rabbit, even just a rabbit outside, you know, things like that. And you can start to really learn how we're all really connected together and everything's connected. Another fun thing you can try is, let's say, you don't, uh, you don't feel like drawing all these cards, but you have a bunch of like plush animals, like you have a plushy fox and a plushy turtle and a plushy plant. You can use those as your food web and tie the uh, yarn to them and kind of move them around, okay? So that's a food web. I'm so happy you joined me today in EcoStation to learn this. I do want to remind you all that we have lots of content up on our website, so take a look at all of it so you can see all the fun things that we have for you. And I just want to ask you all to stay safe, uh, have a good time while you're at home, and do some of these things and share it with us. Share us what you did. If you draw a bunch of cards, go ahead and share them with us. We'd love to see what you did as well as uh, any discoveries you've made or any uh, thoughts you have. So once again, this is Jason saying goodbye and I hope you have a really nice day. Thanks.